23rd chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Luke's Gospel, chapters numbers 23. <clears throat> And uh, reading from verse so it's 32, from verses 32, the Bible says here in verses 32, he says, and there were also two other male factors led uh, with him to be, de to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors one on the right hand and the other on the left then said Jesus father forgive them for they know not what they do and they parted his raiment and cast lots and the people stood beholding and the rulers also with them uh, with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. Father, we thank you. We love you. We honor you, Lord, this morning. And Father, Lord, we pray, God, may you just uh, have that on precious way. And Lord, we want to thank you for what you're going to do and what you have done. And Father, we just want to praise you Lord, may Jesus be lifted up here this morning and no one else. And I thank you, Lord, for everything. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 And uh, as I would always remark that Jesus is always the greatest and the most outstanding character in any story that is read in the scriptures. You would have thought that since they are putting him to death, that the others who are staying alive would be the grand character of the story. But that was not the case. Right. Even when he's dying, even when they're putting him to death, he's still the greatest. Yeah. Right. There is none like him. Right. Imagine how could a man that is, whose life is going to be ended, still his name still has more significance yeah. than those who remain alive. That his name still has more significance than those who will actually put him to death. You would have thought in this life that if someone is put to death, if any one of us will be put to death, of course the person with the greatest name would be the one who would have put you to death. Amen? But that's not the case with Jesus. Once he is around, he's always the greatest. Amen. Amen. In death and in life, he is still the greatest. Amen. And what he has done in death, no man is able to do it with six lives. Amen. He's still not able to do it. And so here, Jesus has been placed on the cross. And there is something that Jesus did while he was on the cross. And I would love for us to, as God's people, to see that as a great example. That that is exactly what we, too, should always do. Amen? And, of course, that is verse number 34. What Jesus did is that, while he was on the cross, he prayed. That's what he did. He prayed. And so, you know... Paul said, whatever state that we are in, we must learn to be content. Right. And he also said that we must pray without ceasing. Yeah. And Jesus is showing us that example of praying without ceasing. Another person we could think about, of course, as an individual is Stephen. Yeah. Stephen was the man outside of Jesus that we, the Bible showed us. And in plain words, that there was like almost nobody that, that uh, no other was as full as Stephen. Stephen lived a life where he was never emptied. 
Never empty. The Bible says when they were choosing men in the book of Acts, he said that they chose, he said, listen, choose you out among you. Seven men full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Full of the Holy Ghost and faith and wisdom. And the Bible tells us also that Stephen also being full of faith. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And even when he comes down to his death, while he was dying, he was still full. Yeah. Amen? He was never empty. Never empty. And I trust God that as his people that we would want to be like that. Never empty. Yeah. Never empty. But let's examine Jesus here on the cross. Uh, the Bible tells that two men went up on that cross with him. And uh, there were one on the right and one and the other is on the left. And Jesus is in a situation. But in his situation... He chose to pray. Yeah. He chose prayer to deal with his situation. Sometimes we may choose the face. Sometimes we may choose harsh words. Sometimes we may choose abstinence. We may stay away from church or we may try something violent or we may try to be puffed up. But imagine being in a position like Jesus. And instead of him praying and saying, God, you know, my, my prayer, I'll be honest with you. If it was me, my prayer would have been something like that. Kill them. Yeah. Done away with them. But he did not do that. Right. Amen? He did, that was not his prayer. Right. And so, let's begin to look here. In verse number 33, the Bible says here, And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Now, we could consider the word there. Amen? That the word there. The word there tells us. It says there. That's a place. Amen? There they crucified him. So we see here that there, that place is called Calvary. And Calvary was not an easy place. Amen? It was not an easy place. Now let's consider that place where Jesus was. Calvary. It was a place that he knew that his life was going to be ended. Right. It's a place where they're going to crucify him. The place where he knows that, listen, that they're going to, in, they're, while he's there, they're insulting him. Yeah. They're casting remarks about him. They're looking down on him. They're blaspheming. They're looking down. They're, I mean, they're ridiculing him. What a place to be. Right. But while Jesus was in such a place, he did not fight, but he prayed. And may I say that oftentimes in our lives that sometimes we too are in some very tough and difficult places. And if Jesus, being Jesus, of course, I believe that he probably could have survived without prayer. And he prayed all the time. And if we cannot survive and cannot accomplish really without prayer and we don't pray so someone who could have lived without it did it so often and we who cannot do without it we don't do it enough at all and Jesus chose prayer in a difficult place in a difficult position he chose prayer when he's in a difficult place. Now, if Jesus was to choose prayer in a difficult place, what, is, what then do you think we supposed to do? When we fall in difficult places, and often we will, because Job says, man that is born of a woman is but of a few days and full of troubles. That tells me when I read the text and I analyze it, that tells me that we are falling real short of prayer. Amen? How many times we are in difficult places and we may read a book. We may call someone for an advice. We may look here to listen to someone else's situation. Or we may try to see if we can devise an intellectual plan out of that situation and not pray. But Jesus didn't think his way through this. He didn't reason his way through this. Right. He prayed. Right. 
his way through this. He could, and he had the power to say, hey, to deliver himself out of that particular place, but he did not. Instead of that, he found it necessary to be intimate and to be in touch with the Father. He wanted to get in touch with the Father. And I'm saying that whenever we are in difficult places, we are supposed to choose the option of getting in touch with the Father. And the way to do that, of course, is through prayer. Through preaching, you would listen to him. But through prayer, you will be in contact with him. Amen? And Jesus chose prayer in a difficult place. In a difficult place. I know every one of us, as I said before, we do find ourselves in difficult places. We would. I look in the congregation, I can see a lot of young people, teenagers who are here. And oh, as you grow, you find yourself in difficult places. Amen? Tough places. Wondering, what should I do? Should I obey? Should I listen to my friends? Or should I listen to the words of the preacher or my parents? Difficult. And both at the time seems right. Both seems okay to do. Oh, what should I do? What a difficult place to be in. When you're confronted with some form of temptation. When you think about adults in the congregation. We do too often find ourselves in difficult places. Yeah. Having to make decisions that sometimes will create problem or strife in the family or in the church or, or at work. And we are faced with those, in being in those difficult places. Huh? Right, yeah. Difficult places. You know what? If it was Jesus, he would pray. Yeah. That's where he is. A place where he's going to die. I mean, real difficult. I mean, people, they're pulling his beard. They, I mean, spitting upon him. He's looking down. He's seen his mother standing there. And of course, you know, one of his uh, uh, disciples being, you know, standing there. I mean, what a difficult place that is. Then, what a difficult place. But there they crucified him, Calvary. They crucified him there at Calvary, the place of the skull, the place where individuals would die. Exactly where they would die. But he prayed. This week I couldn't help but to inject that. Uh, listen, a preacher, someone was telling me about a preacher uh, who preached a sermon he was mentioning from the Gospel of Mark and speaking a little bit about Calvary and how, you know, it was the point where Jesus was going to be crucified and uh, he was put into the hall of the praetorium. That's only, I think, is Mark's gospel alone that used that word. And uh, that's the place where Caesar would come through and they would put a purple robe around Caesar to proclaim him as God. And his sermon was entitled, when, um, when Man Became God. And that's where they brought Jesus. And they put a robe around him. Right. And what they were doing is proclaiming him as God. And they did not even know. Right. Right. <laughs> Amen? They did not even know. And so, you know, but praise God that Jesus, he prayed in a difficult place. And so you and I, when we find ourselves in difficult places, as we will, that's what we need to do, is to pray. Amen? It is to pray. I remember when we started, we launched out, and we started to go up to the northwestern side of the island to start the churches and stuff like that, and we, together with Pastor Houston at first, and we started that church here uh, up in Victoria. And um, after that, you know, I was ordained there, and uh, I was on my own, if you put it like that. And I was always praying, saying, God, help me. You know, uh, at that time, it seems very difficult, all the other churches, excepting out of Pastor Celestine. He, he alone had a building, he alone had lands, and you know, and all of that, and all the rest, you know, was just fighting to rent a little building here, this, there, you know, and all of that. And I said, Lord, I tell you what, listen, 
I don't mind going through that. I don't have no problems in going through tough times and hard times, and so I did. Uh, but I said, Lord, I tell you what, listen, I want to, I want to be able to find my way and do something different. I want, uh, Lord, I want you to bless me. I want you to help me that you know I don't have to go through all of that. And boy, I, I tell you what, the guy that was with me, you know, uh, we, I mean, we just all we prayed about that and stuff of like that. And then not too long after that, you know, the American missionary who was not far from us, his wife got ill, and so he went back to the states. And what he did is that he gave us the building. Amen. He gave us the building. Of course, that was a building. The land and building was bought and paid for, uh, of course, by Brother Russell Anderson. Amen? Up there at Hiles Anderson. And so we, had, we got that church building. We got two persons from him. You know, by the time he, you know, get everything organized, you know, we end up getting two persons from him. And so we continue there. And of course, at the same time, during that same period of time, that's where my wife and I, that's the apartment that we stay at the same time. Uh, you know, we, um, I remember, you know, man, we, we just struggling, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just fighting and struggling to make it. And God just answered multiple prayers, amen? Just answered multiple prayers. And I just give God the glory. I mean, I'm talking about hard, hard places, man, hard places. You know, then we launch out. I went out and soul winning one time with some guys in the church and uh, you know I stood up on top of that hill over there and I looked over on the other hill and you know I tell him I said listen let's leave here and let's go over on that hill over there and they said why I said well you know I just believe that you know I'm gonna start a church over on that hill over there and he said wow one of them was like wow I said let's pray and we stood right up on top of the hill we prayed and I said let's go over there and that's where we have the other church now that is building. Get sent me back to this church where we're building. Amen? Amen. And, uh, you know, God just from one after the other, then as we get ready to process in that building, I say, listen, I'll tell you what, listen, I, re I would really love to have a, a truck, a dump truck. Man, I, I want to have a dump truck. I, I want to be able to, you know, to haul all these things and to, you know, be able to do this. I, I, I want to look, I'm looking down the future, you know, to be able to do things. And that, you know, I prayed about that, and then God opened up the door, bam, and I have that dumb truck. Amen? Amen? Yeah, I have that dumb truck. And, uh, you know, just one after the other, and I could give you, you know, just multiple things and multiple things. And uh, now, uh, you know, I've been praying about that van and everything as that, and praise God, you know, I'll be able to get help. And that's the only one that gave me a little trouble. Amen? <laughs> but uh, somebody sent me a picture this morning, Brother Doug, showing me the ship with all the, that's supposed to have the, that van is in port in Grenada right now. Amen? And I'm trusting God that he's going to really be on it, you know? Really be on it. They sent me this morning, say, listen, the boat, the, the vessel is here, so you should be getting it, you know, this time. And so, you know, I just thank God for, you know, what he has done, because when you're in difficult places, you just pray to God, and he'll come true. Not only that, but if we'll continue in verse number 34, he says, Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So we know that he was praying. He said, Father. Whenever he mentions Father, is all the time, every time he mentions, he calls him like Father, like that, is because he's in the mood of prayer. Man, he's in the mood of prayer. But he says here, Then, there tells us of a place. Then, tells us of a period, a time, a moment. Yeah. Huh? A moment. Then said Jesus, Father. Not only he prayed when he is in a difficult place, but also at a difficult period. Sometimes we go through, sometimes there are some periods in our lives that are really difficult. It was good all the time. But there comes a, a moment, there comes a, a time when it is very, very difficult. How difficult it was for Jesus. That's the moment he's in a, a period, in a moment where, of course, all the sins of man will be brought upon him. That's a difficult moment for him. Man, that's a difficult period. He has never sinned. Now he's going to become sin for every one of them. Now he's going to look ugly. Now he's going to look filthy. Now he's going to carry the burdens of the whole world. Amen? 
What a difficult moment. Now he's at a place where, as I said, that they were insulting him. And he's not supposed to forfeit what he's doing, but he's supposed to fulfill this regardless as to what they say about him. He's supposed to still fulfill. Because you and I, we were waiting on him. Men, you and I were waiting on him. And in a difficult period, it was not a long period. It was just that moment there on the cross. Right. Just a short period of time. It is so difficult for him to go through that short period. Less than a day. He's into that moment. And still, when he finds himself in such a period, he said, Lord, he said, Father, forgive them. He prayed in a difficult moment. He prayed. Not only that we find ourselves in difficult places, but we do find ourselves in difficult moments. Yeah. Amen? Right. Some real difficult moments that requires immediate decision, that requires us to make the right decision at this particular time. And then it seems as though, what shall I do? What could I do? It seems as though, like, making the right decision is so difficult so hard to do the right thing at that particular moment. And Jesus, he prayed. He prayed. As I said, he could have called the angels in that moment and just deliver. He could have called on fire from heaven and just consume all the Romans around, but he did not. Now, if you and I have that option to escape that insult, with all that pride that we have as human beings, tell me, what would you have done? <laughs> Knowing that you're about to die for the very ones who are piercing your side. To give them an opportunity not to go to hell. Bearing in mind that you, 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 you're dying to save those, to give those an opportunity who insulted you along the way. For the whole of humanity. Imagine your neighbor that doesn't like you. And you're going to be dying to, say, to give your neighbor a chance to escape. Hell. Huh? <laughs> tell me. Oh. You tell me. Imagine that co-worker that would do everything and conspire in every which way they can to see if they can get you fired. Yeah. And your death is supposed to be a help, an open door to get them out of their position. That's a difficult moment. You're dying for such a person. The one who doesn't care. Men? The one who does not care. For every liberal individual, whether they be politically, whether now they be Republican or Democrat, as it might be in your case, you're dying for them. And you have a moment where you could do otherwise. And instead of that, you're chosen to say, Lord, forgive them. Now, these are not easy words to come out for a human being. But for Jesus, he prayed in a difficult moment. Difficult moment. A difficult place. A difficult period. He prayed. Teenagers. In your teenage years, these are difficult periods. Oh, these are difficult periods in life. Every person, sometimes as adults, we forget that we once were teenagers. <laughs> sometimes you have gone past it so long that you forget what it was. Don't you? Amen? And uh, you know sometimes we talk to teenagers as if they say man, they ought to know better. <laughs> you know? But it's a difficult period. And as a teenager, of course, the best thing for you to do in those difficult periods is to pray and say, God help me. When Josiah became king, the Bible says at the age of eight, he became king. Right? At the age of eight, he became king. And of course, you, no doubt he would have probably have advisors and everything as that and stuff. And then when he was 16 years of age, 
16 years of it, the Bible said that he prayed. That's teenage, that's sweet 16. Amen? The years of exploration. The years when young men would think, listen, hey, nobody can talk to me, I'm a man. <laughs> you know what I mean? But Josiah prayed that when Josiah reached the age of 20, 12 years after he became king, the Bible says that he made a decision to break down the groves and the molded images and stuff. You know why? Because as a teenager, he prayed and he said, God, he seek after God, the God of his father, David, the Bible said, he sought after him and he got enlightenment. And if every teenager in that difficult period, as Josiah did, when you reach your adult years, you will know what to do. Amen? You will know what to do. The point is, at the difficult period, we must pray. We got to pray. And if Jesus, in a difficult place, could pray, and in a difficult period could choose prayer, then what are we going to do? What are we going to do when our moments come? When, our, when we find ourselves in those places, what are we going to do? Last one. It says in verse number 34, Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them. There is the place. Then is the period. Them is the people. Difficult people. He looked down and he looked at all these Jews. They were difficult people. You think when you read the scripture, you would see that the Jewish people were very difficult. They were hard. Not so? They were hard individuals. <laughs> to confirm that, of course, all in the Old Testament, they are called a stiff naked people. Amen? A stiff naked people. That's the, that's the way that they are referred to. They are stiff naked. Imagine somebody call you stiff neck. Amen? I, I would imagine that probably there are a lot of wives that call their husband stiff neck. Amen? <laughs> stiff neck. Tough and hard. And Jesus looked down at these people, these difficult and hard individuals. And he did not say, Father, kill them. But he said, forgive them. He prayed for a hard and difficult people. Now, I'm sure that when you go to knock on doors and go to soul winning, you meet difficult people. You meet hard people. I'm sure that there are hard individuals on your job. Around you, in your neighborhood, there are hard individuals. Those of you who go to school, I'm sure that you got hard friends. People that you probably had been witnessing to. Maybe some of you got hard kids, difficult kids. You've been trying to reach them and trying to talk to them for a very long time. Trying to see how you can share the gospel and trying to influence them to go the right way. And they're proving themselves to be very hard. Not so? Very hard. And you keep wondering, what can I do? How much more could I say? What more can I say to them? Well, do like Jesus did. He looked down at one of the hardest set of people in the world and he prayed for them. When we go to soul winning and we find someone that seems to be difficult in our everyday lives and otherwise that we might try to witness to and they don't, they not seem to be coming, coming around. What we need to do is to pray for difficult and hard people. As hard as they are, because only Jesus' blood can change the leopard spot. Amen? Amen. Only Jesus' blood can take the heart of stone and turn it into flesh. Amen? Only Jesus can change the mind of the king because the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. 
only Jesus alone that is able to soften every stony heart. And so as a result of that, that's why we need to pray for a hard and difficult people. Maybe around the area. Sometimes people may say, man, I'll tell you what, people up here probably might be hard. You know, or in wherever. You know, pastors and preachers may say, man, I'll tell you what, I'm in an area where people is very hard. Friend, I'll tell you what, listen, you just keep going one by one. And God is going to lead one by one. God is going to lead. And as hard as the children of Israel's hearts were, many times that they failed to repent, but there come a time that God was able to break their hearts. God was able to break their heart. Hey, as hard as it is, as hard as they are, Jesus, and remember now, Jesus is on the cross and he's dying. And he's looking down at them. And he has one on the side of him that is making a mockery of all what he did. Regardless as to all what he's going through at the moment, at this period, in this place, he chose to pray. He chose to pray. Now, he didn't ask for his mother. He didn't ask for his father. As a matter of fact, whatever reference that he made to his mother there in the Gospel of John, it was a pure act of love. Because even at the point when he was dying, while he's on the cross and he's dying, he said to John, Behold thy mother. And he said to Mary, Behold thy son. Knowing that he is the eldest son and he would have been probably charged with that responsibility to look after her. And now he's going out, he's dying. He did not even think about himself. But he makes sure and he ensured the security of his mother. Make sure that his mother is being put into someone's hands that will take care of her. He did not think of himself. He'd done all of that on the cross. And when all is said and done, he cried out. He prayed for the hard hearts. He prayed. In a, he showed that example when he prayed and he did all of that. And he yielded up the gold. Before he yielded up the gold, he said, now, it is finished. It is finished. They said that the worst kick you can get is, they said it's from a dying horse. I don't know how, but that's a saying back home. They always say that. The worst kick you can get is from a dying horse. I don't know how true that is. But what a great example you could get from a person who is about to die. So, Jesus showed us that example. Don't you know people that is hard? That you give up on them? You say, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to tell them a word again. They heard it enough. I think about people back home like that. When I go to witness and I go out and soul winning, I say, man, I know, I know they're difficult, but I think about Jesus. He never gave up. He prayed. And I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed. And I've seen God touch people and turn people's lives around. What we need to do when we're in a difficult place, when we're in a hard place, when we're in a hard period, when we see hard people, we got to do like Jesus and pray. And pray. And praise God, if we keep on praying, that he would listen. Amen? He will listen. So let's do like Jesus. Amen? Let's do like Jesus and keep on praying. Father, we love you, we thank you, we honor you. We magnify your name. And oh God, I pray, Lord, may you bless your word to our hearts. And we thank you, Lord, for the example that is therein. We give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.